What gives you the confidence that Christianity is true? First of all, it's, it's the Bible itself. Um, I think the testimony of Scripture, when I read Scripture, I don't come away feeling like this is a book that's, that's like uh, uh, most others that I've engaged. It doesn't feel like a comic book. It feels true. I find external verification of its truth. Um, I find it in a variety of ways that, uh, that the things that it, it asserts um, are true not only experientially for me, the things it says about human beings, the things that it says historically I often find to be true, um, but I often find uh, also that the, uh, the, the theological uh, assertions that it makes ring with the reality, the world that I move in. My own experiences validate the things that I find in scriptures. This is describing a God who needs to put a rainbow in the sky that when he looks at it, it reminds him of a covenant that he made some time ago. Assume it, it, what it's assuming. It's a, it's, of course, it's, what, what, what it's a assume? manner of speaking. But who is the Messiah? The Messiah is a creation of God. Never to be worshipped. Is the Messiah a In whose book? You, I think you had a question. I, I wanted to say something here. When it comes to um, like us disobeying the Lord, like it's in our DNA, isn't that some, some sort also of beautiful that, that we have this trial, basically that, that we are naturally going against the law of the, of, of the Father, of the Creator, right? But that we always try to come back. Isn't it necessarily not in essence a good thing? For example, you have, you have two people, one that really don't care and just follow their desires, and another one who are battling against their desires, and whenever they mess up, they just say, God, forgive me. Is that in essence not a beautiful thing? Why are we looking at that in a negative way? Oh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that is a negative thing. I'm just saying that ultimately that doesn't expunge the sin. No, I understand. That doesn't expunge right. the sin. But no, I do. I think you're. I think you're right. I think that is a good thing. Okay. No. Okay. Thank you. That was it. Okay. Yeah, Very good. <laughs> nice Goodbye. to meet you. Take care. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Right. Um, uh, you're a Muslim? No. No, I'm a Christian. Okay. I'm a Muslim. So, what gives you the confidence that Christianity is true? That's a great question. Um, I, there's a couple of things that factor into that. First of all, it's, it's the Bible itself. Um, I think the testimony of Scripture, when I read Scripture, I don't come away feeling like this is a book that's, that's like uh, uh, most others that I've engaged. It doesn't feel like a comic book. It feels true. Not only that, but I find external verification of its truth. Um, I find it in a variety of ways that, uh, that the things that it, it asserts um, are true not only experientially for me, the things it says about human beings, the things that it says historically I often find to be true, um, but I often find uh, also that the, uh, the, the theological uh, assertions that it makes ring with the reality, the world that I move in. And then um, I, would, uh, I would say to you, uh, my experience. So I, I would say there's scripture itself, and then there is my own experience. Uh, and this is something that the older I get, the more I find that, uh, that, that scripture is true. Meaning um, that my own, my own experiences validate the things that I find in scripture. So for me, those are all things that, uh, that, that factor in to uh, uh, why I believe the Bible is true. And I'll also say to you that I don't find other explanations for the world to be particularly compelling. You know, I don't, I don't find, for instance, the atheistic model to be very compelling. The what things, about, there was nothing. What about, and that's, what about Islamic? Well, you know, I would, I, I would sooner be a Muslim than I would be an atheist. Um, so I, what stops you from becoming a Muslim? Well, because I don't, I, I don't think the, uh, the Muslim explanation uh, resonates with my own experience as a human being. Um, I don't. That's a subjective thing, though. I mean, when you examine things objectively, because there must be some criteria. That you well, tell me why. No, let me ask you the same question. Yeah. Why would? What would you say is compelling? Uh, what would make you a Muslim? What do you sure, find? Sure. Um, when we examine the Islamic belief system, so you have the Quran and you have the Prophet and his teachings. So they go in harmony, and what is being taught and the scripture itself it indicates very clearly to me that this can only come from God Almighty for example if it describes God in a way that you know it's not true for example if my book described God one time he dealt with people and then he saw so people were so wicked so he punished them and then he made a covenant with them 
And then part of the sign of the covenant, he said, you know what, I'm going to put a rainbow in the sky. And when I'm angry again and about to destroy the mankind one more time, I shall look at the clouds and I will see the rainbow and I will remember. I will remember of the covenant that is made. Now, if you found something like this in my book, you'd say, look, this doesn't describe God perfectly because it's describing a God who needs to put a rainbow in the sky that when he looks at it, it reminds him of a covenant that he made some time ago. Assume it, it, what it's assumed. It's a, it's, of course, it, it's, what, what it's a manner of speaking. No, Let me ask you this question. What it assumes that this God <clears throat> forgets and needs reminding by a rainbow. So if you found this description in my book, would you say this was a go good description of, of well, God Well, Almighty? well, I, I, I don't think I would extrapolate too much from from that. Meaning, oh, no. these are these are anthropomorphisms. This is a this is a manner of speaking. When it speaks of God as having eyes and God as having wings and this sort of thing, these this is a manner of speaking in a way that we well, relate. You know, this is this quality. is relate. This is the ways of relating uh, relating to Him. I don't. I, the Scripture speaks of God uh, as uh, as as uh, all knowing. Uh, I don't think that I don't think that God Himself is is forgetful in the manner in which you're speaking of it. Let me ask you this. Yeah, let me ask you. Let me ask you this as a fairly. Let me ask you this as a fairly basic question. If I'm Muslim, what must I do to be saved? Sure. We can answer that question. It's simply easy. You just have to worship one God without ascribing any partners to him. Right? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, without ascribing any partners to him. So do not commit any association in his divinity. Only worship God alone. So that's the prerequisite to be saved. But coming to this point, if that wasn't So if God, I'm a Muslim, I, I can know. I can know my salvation. I can elaborate bit further, but I want to point this because the description I gave about God and having a covenant is actually in your books. It's in, um, in um, the yes, Bible. Yes, yes, I'm aware of it. You're familiar with it. The way it is described, it's not only describing that oh, God is a very ancient of days. This is not only that description. The description is God makes a covenant and says, I'm going to put a rainbow in the sky. So when I look at it, I will remember. The words are used in such a way that the remembrance of the covenant is taking place the moment that God looks at the cloud and he sees the rainbow. At that point, he is reminded by it. That description is an imperfect description of someone who is unknowledgeable and someone who is not forgetting. It describes a being that possibly can forget and when he looks at the rainbow, it is reminding him. So you would ex you would extrapolate from that 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 one Why phrase. Would you, not? you would extrapolate from that one, one phrase, phrase. This that this theme. is an imperfect God and hence an imperfect no, no, no. book and this an imperfect is... religion and a God that I don't believe in. No, of course not. You will be faulted to extrapolate from one example. This is one example where the knowledge of God is described to be very imperfect. My corollary to this is in the New Testament, in your belief, for example, and I would like to see how you reconcile these things. When you believe God is all knowledgeable, obviously, from that example, even though that goes against clear text that, you know, this is a forgetful God, you don't believe in that to be true. You explain it away in some way. That's up to you. But when I read it, it cannot be from God, this description. So you believe God is all knowledgeable. He's all knowledgeable all the time. So when you have a concept of God where there is a Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, and the sun comes down and he empties himself and he doesn't know. He becomes less than unknowledgeable. How do you accept this? Because if you are unknowledgeable to begin with, because God is unknowledgeable, you can never become less than unknowledgeable. This is what happened to the second member of the Trinity, the Son of God in your belief. How do you reconcile this? I, you know, I have no difficulty reconciling that. <laughs> let me come back to the let me come back to the first one. Um, before again, throughout throughout script, there's something that we call a principle of accommodation, and what we mean by the principle of accommodation, what that means is that God is infinite and we are finite, and that God speaks to us in Scripture the way a mother might speak to a toddler, comes down to a level in order to relate to us and speak to us in a language uh, that we might understand Him. Um, I think that I think that you're you're trying very hard to try to, to, to take an infinite God and to cram him in to a, uh, to a mold that fits into our own understanding. I'm, I'm contented to, to rest with a certain measure of mystery as it relates to God. He's, he is, he's infinite and I'm finite. My knowledge is imperfect. There, there, are, there are aspects to God's character, there are aspects to his creation that I don't fully understand and that I quite readily accept on faith. That said, 
I think there are, there are a great many things that we understand in Scripture. The big picture that he lays out of who he is as a just God, but also as a God of grace, who gives us the opportunity of eternal life. And how did he do it? Because, as we were talking about on the ladder, he became man. And he became man, and he came to dwell among us the way we're talking with each other right now. He engaged with people just in a very similar way. And not to argue over a, a, a parsing of words, but rather to lay out very clearly what salvation is, how you can be saved, and you can be saved, and you can be saved. And what I love about the Jesus that I encounter in Scripture is this wasn't a Jesus who came to save just the Jews. He wasn't a Jesus who came to save just the Romans. He wasn't a Jesus who came to, to, to save people of his own skin color. But he came and he equally offended people of uh, every race and nationality. And he also equally offered eternal life to people of every nationality, of every ethnicity, male and female. That's what I love about the Jesus that I encounter. He said, if you, regardless of who you are, if you believe in me, if you believe that I am God, if you believe, did he say that? you can, you can know so many words, he said multiple times. Yeah. So did he explain to, so did he actually clarify to people, and it was totally unambiguous, very clear, did not require an explanation, that he was making statements to people that he was God of Israel on earth? I think that it, it, what we find in Scripture, he said, let them who have ears hear and those who have eyes see. Meaning he knew, Jesus did not throw pearls before swine. And what he meant by that, what, 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 what Scripture means by that, is that you and I are interested in talking to people, like right now, I sense you're really interested. And I'm, in, I'm in interested in the things that you're saying. Mm -hmm. But neither of us are interested in talking to people who aren't really listening. Why am I interested in, in, in opening my mind, in opening my, my heart, in revealing uh, my thoughts, in wasting time with someone who isn't, interesting, uh, isn't interested, but just simply wants to show me how clever they are? Jesus did the same thing. So there were instances, instances throughout Scripture where he withdraws. He withdraws from people. A pilot trying to hammer out of him these kinds of things. Jesus remained silent before him. Okay, so and you're, you're telling us the negative. So those people who are willing to listen to him, like his disciples or his family, like his mother. Let's just go to John chapter 4. Oh, wait, wait, slowly, He's speaking to a woman there. Slowly, slowly, please. Slowly. Um, we wouldn't understand this. So he made it very clear to the people who are listening to him that he is claiming to be God of Israel on earth and needs to, and people should worship him. Yes, I think so. I think if we go, to, I think if we go, well, let's just let's just go to John chapter 4. There he is uh, talking with the Samaritan woman, mm -hmm. and she says, "We believe." That, uh, that the Messiah is coming. And he says, I am he. He's quite clear on who he is. He also refers to himself as, as the Father and I are one. That's very clear what he's, he's saying there. I am. He's, he makes a series of I am statements. People who knew their Bibles knew exactly what he was signaling. And the very reason the Jews were trying to kill him of his own time was because they knew he was asserting that he was God in the flesh. And they said, this cannot stand. This man must die. Okay, let's so, there, so yes, in answer to your question, he was unambiguous about so who me, he was. Let's see these claims that actually stand up to be unambiguous claims. So there, she was saying what that a messiah she's expecting let, and and certainly uh, let, let me say this i have a dinner engagement um how long do you have time i i can how about five more minutes no problem okay no problem so you have a statement from him i am he so if i that's made the statement i am he means i am the messiah yeah. but that's not the question that we we're discussing we we're talking about whether he made himself clear that he was god of israel but who earth. but but who was the messiah the messiah is the creation of god Never to be worshipped. Is the Messiah a In whose book? <laughs> so in the Jewish scripture, exactly. is Messiah God or a creation of God? Good question. I'm asking you the question. Uh, the, the Messiah is not a creation of God. Yeah. So what the, Messi it? the Messiah, the Messiah is the Savior of God. Right. He is He is He is God made flesh. So this Jewish is who people? the Messiah okay. this is this is who the Messiah okay. is. So this is your understanding. Do we have the Jewish people over the thousands of years of the Jewish history. They believe the Messiah is not a creation of God. 
Is that what you said? They believe, they believe that the Messiah himself... Well, listen, we, we find this in Scripture where the reason they did not accept Jesus was because they didn't listen to his message. Well, the question, Jews of his time. My question is quite specific. Do the Jewish people and the Jewish scholars... The Jewish, the Jewish scholars, the Jewish scholars, the Jewish, the, the, the Jewish scholars of the Old Testament, the, the prophets, the writers of that Scripture, asserted that this was who the Messiah was. Well, it was just clear in my response to you. Do you have the Jewish people, the Jewish scholars... I've just, I've just just answered your question. So, so where in the Jewish scripture it says? I, 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 listen, I think I think I think scripture I think scripture is quite clear on this point. It's very clear. It's very clear up, up on this point is who as to who he is. And and and, and, and uh, um, Jesus Jesus was he. And this was who he was asserting who he was. And the Jews himself knew this. You, this still, is why they're trying to kill him. You're still claiming rather than examining the questions that they're asking. <laughs> no, 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 so, no, but you're obfuscating. You're obfuscating no, no, by trying to, trying, not, you're, okay. you're trying to divert from what the, what the no, actual... No, no, let me, let me clarify. Listen, listen. I, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. But, but I've got to go. I've got to go. You, you call me five minutes and you have to go after three That's minutes. Fine, That's if fine. If you want to go, we no can't problem. Can impose it. No problem. But the old I've enjoyed it. You take care. Thanks, Yeah, delighted. Anyway, good to be with you.